What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You're watching Dave on TV where we go beyond the everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. And I want to talk real quick about sharp rulers. Um, something to keep in mind. You know, astrology is best used as a tool to understand yourself more. You are a spirit in a body who chose these attributes. You are not these signs. You just got to put that out there. Astrology is a tool. A lot of astrologers will explain astrology and just... It's natural to look at things and um, look at them through the lens of this is me because this is how we are brought up. This is how we're raised to believe that we are these things, even down to our feelings, emotions, the things that we were um, praised about and the things that we were neglected on, the things that we were shamed for. We oftentimes attach ourselves to these things, but you have to always keep in mind you are a spirit independent of all of these things labeled. Um, any confine that people try to put you in you as a spirit have the power to be um i'm not gonna say be whoever you want to be because you have to be yourself there is a you um but finding yourself comes from shedding a lot of the things that were put upon you to represent you know what i'm saying you don't have to represent your insecurities you don't have to represent your shortcomings you 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 be yourself by understanding who you are from a base level what you like in your space, you know what I'm saying, what you like to concentrate on. And sometimes, you know, we, we receive so many thoughts and feelings throughout our lifetime, I mean, throughout the day, throughout the, the seconds and minutes that we forget that we have to clear these things out at times. You know, this is the point of meditation and all of that. But I don't want to get too far down that line. I'm just reiterating the point that astrology is merely a tool. And stop, assign, stop attaching yourself to and also, you know, um, don't use astrology to justify bullshit in your life. If you know that you're doing or participating in something that is hindering you from connecting to other individuals, a.k.a. say you are a um, all water sign and you think everything is about your emotions, but you see how your emotional, your, uh, your emotional extreme energy is tarnishing your relationships, you know, you still have to be yourself. If you're an emotional person, you're an emotional person. So... Not only do you, but you have to be this. You have to, you have to be yourself in the sense of knowing that, okay, this might be my nature, but you also have to have enough self-reflection or self-realization to be like, this is also where it's fucking my life up. So let me make sure that I manage my emotions in a proper way in which I can be participating with other individuals in a healthy manner. And, but I can also respect the fact that I am emotional and I need other individuals who understand that you know what i'm saying but you can only you can only not only manifest the right situation for you to actually have individuals who understand that if you are being yourself you can only manifest that if you're being yourself but you also have to again there's another aspect where you balance it by understanding you know is that who you want to be though do you want to be that emotional person or, or do your emotions cause more havoc in life or do they um do they produce more good? And then again, even when it comes to thoughts and feelings, we have to understand these things and how how easy it is for us to assign ourselves or attach ourselves to these as identities. You are not your feelings. You are not your thoughts. You are not your sign. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you chose that sign to play out certain energies and to also have certain experiences in this lifetime. And this is where we get down to understanding astrology as a tool you know you chose these energies to have a certain experience but that experience isn't necessarily you you define that experience you know almost the concept of you're the creator not the creation you have to look at things in in, in, in terms of this is just my paintbrush your astrology your natal chart this whole this little you know what I'm saying it's pretty little thing back back there it's just your paintbrush you know it's the brush you chose to paint these things it's the different your elements and the different colors in which you use in your palette but the canvas is your life and you can do whatever you want with your life you know but you have to be the initiator of that you have to make sure that you're taking um action on that and that you are staying on that track for yourself what you decide decide to paint on that canvas is your purpose that's your mission and by all means you need to make sure you do what you need to do in order to get to the picture that you want and again we know with painting and things of that nature are things in, in general in life things ain't always gonna go how you plan it but understand that thinking too hard about 
how things are going to all turn out is useless. You know, any painter or any any artist will tell you a lot of times, you know, the vision you had in your mind, what you get on that paper ain't going to be the exact same thing. However, that's what being a better magician is about, a.k.a. knowing your energies and how to better control your mind as a spirit so that you know how to get more close to the accuracy of what you're trying to paint from your mind to the paper, the paper being your life. You know what I'm saying? And then, again, a reincarnation, if you want to get in, into that, that's just you coming back to learn how to be a better magician. So you, in this present moment in time, you probably had many lives. And those many lives, you were doing the same thing, trying to get right with the image. And you chose different energies, different time periods, all kinds of different things. But remember that you chose, even if you feel like you're an individual. Oh, I came here. I didn't ask to be born. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you chose this. You know, and again, not uh, coming up with an ideology of I didn't choose to be born here. <laughs> It's just your way of escaping accountability for the bullshit that you're in. And we all have to go through bullshit, but the bullshit, we have to come to the grip that it's the accumulation of us getting the picture wrong. We made mistakes. We have to use the little eraser. We have to kind of understand how to how to make the most out of our life. Because even throughout your life, you're going to make a bunch of mistakes. The question is, how are you going to take these mistakes and, you know, because again, some of the greatest art pieces come from mistakes. You know, you can't avoid mistakes. You have to accept them for what they are and you have to take initiative and take ownership, take accountability and you have to make the most out of them, you know, and that's just life in general. But get back to the point of the video, um, chart rulers. So when you're talking about chart rulers, you might be like, what, what is that? So in astrology, you there's many different ways you can come to the conclusion of what's your chart ruler uh, based upon uh, certain energies that just come come back up. Chart rulers are usually planets. You can look at certain planets and as, as far as these energies that you are, you know, most associating your experience with. So, for instance, your sun sign. Now, that deals with what you're paying attention to. So, any planet that conjuncts your sun sign is can be considered somewhat of a chart ruler. Also, the sign of your planet, the ruling sign of that, for instance, like my, for, for me, I'm a Pisces sun. Um, I could look at Jupiter as my chart ruler and not really the outer planets. You want to be careful with those. You can look at those as more so just background influences. These things are too far away for you to associate them with your overall ruler. However, if it is in a place, for instance, like your ascendant or conjunct your sun or conjunct your moon, you can you can look at it like kind of like a somewhat of a background influence. It's not your overall chart ruler, but it's a it's a powerful influence in your life and you can kind of tap into these energies as far as understanding the nations. Like, for instance, Uranus deals with change and almost like opposing. So if you find Uranus to be, it's not going to be your actual chart ruler, but it's an influence towards your chart ruler, you know that whatever is your chart ruler is going to have an influence of that rebellious energy, that, that needing to oppose energy. So you might be opposing with that style of energy, you know, um, and Pluto transformative with that type of energy. Uh, so, like, for me, you, uh, you know, and I'm actually Scorpio rising, so it's like, okay, I, and Pluto's kind of in my first house, too. So, Pluto's there in where you would consider a chart ruler, but it's an outer planet, so I look at it more like it just influences the, the energies that I claim to be my um, chart ruler. So, Jupiter... It's like I'm transformative with my wisdom. I'm, I go deep with wisdom or things of that nature. Or if it was Neptune, you know, Neptune being like more of that Pisces energy. I'm dreamlike with the wisdom. I, I take wisdom from a place that people can connect to as far as dreams, imaginations. Or I could be, uh, you know what I'm saying, in a little, yeah, like you have, you have the power to be in illusions, you know, or to use illusions, you know, for creative measures and things of that nature. That's what I use illusions for creative aspects you know you don't want to use illusions for trying to get you know associating people in your life and things of that nature that, that that's how you mess up but for the most part understanding chart rulers helps you understand the nature of yourself you know the nature of the energies you chose so if the nature is of the energies like we can go down the line you know if it's Mer 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 mercury you know you deal with more thinking if mercury is your chart ruler you're more it's more fast moving things it's more things that deal with analytics things that deal with um you know uh communication um you need to be more communication focused now, also, I want to get to clarify how you identify your chart rulers. Like I said, planets in your first house, um, the energy of your first house, like whatever sign is your ascendant, 
um, look at the ruling planets of that. Those can lead you to your uh, chart rulers and then where your sun is at and where uh, what it conjuncts uh, and also the moon. Now, if you have stelliums around these things, of course, you know, this is like five different planets you might have that all associate with what you want to call your chart ruler. But you can usually tell your chart ruler more so from what's going on in your first house and maybe even where your sun is at. Now, the moon, the moon is more what makes you comfortable. It's not necessarily what's ruling you. It's not necessarily what's, you know, it might be the motivator in your life, but it's not necessarily what's pushing everything. You know, it's really your ascendant energy. Your ascendant energy, any planets in that first house, these kind of like are your first awareness. So these are the first things that you clinged on to in order to be like, oh yeah, these are energies. Like, so it's like whatever planets, even if you have a first house stellium, these are energies that you were trying to like scramble to like collect first. It's your first awareness of things when the first the sun was first rising, it was like boom, oh, those are the first lights you you clung to. You know what I'm saying? But the first thing you paid attention to, it's like like I said in, in that other video, I forgot what the video it was, but the sun is like your first awareness or what you first uh paid attention to. But when the sun was rising, your first awareness became where your your rising was at. So it was like your you was already in that space paying attention to stuff. But as the sun, where the sun was at, that perspective is the perspective you chose to have on that awareness. You know, the awareness itself is where the sun is at, but the perspective in which you look at that awareness is where the rising sign is at. So even through understanding your rising sign and its relationship to your sun, you can determine how you actually look at your actions. And sometimes us having a harsh alignment with our ascendant in our sun it can cause for a clash that you don't really feel confident in your actions. You don't really, the way you're looking at your actions, say you're opposite, your ascendant is opposite your son. Your perspective on your actions may be opposite. You may not really believe in your actions the same way as if you had a sextile or a tron, you know, but even those things aren't necessarily good because, you know, just because you have the gift of the, the your, you know, well, you know, just because you have a gift, or like a tron or a sextile, these these things can be opposite uh, opportunities of destruction depending on what planets are interacting within that alignment, um, what signs you got in those energies. But for the most part, you know, just understanding the nature. You know, I know I'm talking about the sun and ascendant, but say you got other planets involved in that, you know, it could influence it in different ways. We should just get normal, uh, yeah, normalized, not looking at trines as positive and sex styles as just positive or vice versa, squares as negative or oppositions as negative because there could be very ways, depending on you as a spirit, how you choose to look at these things and utilize these things in your life, it could be the very benefit of your life. You know, you could have a certain square that allows you to teach something that you learn through a difficulty in your life that other people just, again, need help with. So, boom, there, there off the bat, you found a way to use your square, which is a difficult, harsh angle, to your benefit. Now, it's something that you actually excel in. It's an area in life that you chose to hone in on, learn the aspects, ins and outs. And now, you the ma you know, you the, you, the, you the master of that shit. You, you, you are now the expert of that area of life, you know. But um, for the most part, you know, yeah. Now, when we talk about chart rulers, understanding your chart ruler helps you understand what energies... You need to make sure that when you're establishing relationships and you are also just involving yourself in certain things, understand that certain things need to cater to your chart ruler. For instance, now I was just talking about Mercury. Let's let's go down to all the chart rulers. So Mercury, you know, you need things that are intellectually stimulating. You need things that work on your mind. You need uh, space and opportunity to talk to communicate, but also to talk to yourself, you know, say some people aren't so outward with their communication. For instance, if you're like Virgo, it's an internal Mercury sign. So your conversations happen with yourself a lot of times. Not to say you won't communicate with others, but it, a lot of the communication starts from inside. You're analyzing, you're making sense out of details. You're like, you know, thinking and going back and forth with things. Now, when it comes to, yeah, that's that's like Mercury. Now, let's say like Mars is your chart ruler. You need passion in your life. You need things that excite you, right? You need um, things that you can put your energy into, whether it's a creative outlet or something in which you can, um, again, use as an inspiring measure or ways in which you can uh, exert your aggression, your, your I don't want to say authority, but you need something that you can feel like you dominate you know what i'm saying you need things that you can feel like you can control even if it's just your life and small aspects of that like you need areas in which you can feel powerful um 
you know, that's that's kind of like Mars also dealing with certain things, dealing with sex. You know, you have to consider sex drive. Sometimes we have a higher sex drive. Now, that don't mean you just have to uh, dive into pleasures and have sex with a lot of individuals. This just means that sex is the joining of two energies. Sex is you knowing how to combine your energies with another individual. It causes friction, but that friction used to produce something new. So... When it comes to a high sex drive, again, it goes back to transmuting energy. You need to have outlets. Outlets in which you can put your energy into it, and you can meet it with another energy, and you can produce new things. Not just, again, when I say sex, it's not just about, you know, literally having sex with a bunch of individuals. We got to be, um, got to understand the nature of things beyond that. Um, but that's a part of life too, you know what I'm saying? You might, again, you, if you have a certain sexual appetite, you need to understand, again, like I said, the whole thing about chart rulers, understand what is ruling your chart so you know what energies you kind of need to surround yourself around in order to get the experience that you intended to when you chose these energies, because you ain't choose these energies for no reason. That's why I said the disclaimer in the beginning where the astrology is a tool. It's, it's not meant to be you. However, you chose these things to have a certain experience. So it's up to you to decide how to use these things to get the most out of what energies you have. The better you use these energies, the better you, you develop an experience that you can sit back and say, yeah, I learned the lessons I needed to learn or I seen the things I needed to see in this lifetime. And you can be satisfied at the end um, of things. But let's keep on going. So let's say Venus is your chart ruler. You need harmony. You need compromise. You know, you need opportunities for other individuals around you to support you. And you also need things for you to be able to support as well. You need things that uh, cater to your ability to feel um, comfortable, comfortable on some level. Um, you need things that cater to um, growth in the sense of, you know, Mars deals more with destruction. You need the opportunity to destroy things, to tear things down so that you can make new things, you know, um, or combat things. Venus, you need opportunities for things to be able to flourish and grow, you know, um, not to say that you being Mars uh, as a chart ruler, you can't be in situations that grow, but you need growth through conflict. Venus, you need growth through harmony, compromise, and compatibility, and, and almost like equal exchange where you give, they give, you know, you support it, they support it. You know what I'm saying? They, they're supportive. So you need more environments that cater to that. Now, when we talk about uh, Jupiter, you need experiences that allow freedom to explore, freedom to learn and experience. You know what I'm saying? You need uh, situations and circumstances that um, allow for, like I said, freedom, but freedom of the mind. You need You need space to come up with your own perspective, basically. You need experiences in your life as well. The freedom to make a mistake, to go through something and not have a blueprint, to to um you know to teach yourself almost. And this is how you become a teacher. A teacher, you know what I'm saying. You but you need space to go through what you need to go through. A Jupiter, someone with a, a Jupiter as their chart ruler who doesn't have the space to actually go out on their own and learn things for themselves. They're going to be very resentful and they might even be foolish because their 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 perspective won't be fully developed in order to know the ins and now some things that they should already know or it could play out vice versa where you're too smart for your own good and you end up in a lot of situations that teach you to almost like teach you to be modest and teach you to actually sit down shut up and learn from others you also need to be willing to learn and you need to be in situations with relationships and partners and experiences that actually can teach you something not just in something local like for instance like and by local i don't i don't so mean so much mean literally but local mentally like you're about a, you're around a bunch of individuals that you know you're smarter than um they can't teach you anything but you're familiar with that so you stay in there that's like that third house you know sag and uh gemini being the third house that opposition where you take the ninth house and the third house you fuck around be the smartest person in your area but the second you realize you're the smartest person in your area you're doing something wrong and i say that because you're not challenging yourself you're not able to expand in there so over time you're going to get complacent with that uh mediocrity basically that's how you be mediocre you end up being mediocre by not putting yourself in uh, situations where there's other individuals in the room who are smarter than you that might feel intimidating to somebody who's not as wise but a smart individual knows that no 
me putting myself in a space with other people who are smarter than me, I'm going to constantly be learning at an accelerated rate. You know, so it's just a perspective on things. You know, you, you should you should be happy to be in rooms where people know more than you and in rooms where you know you you the smartest person. You know, you know that you can't stay there for long, you know. I'm not gonna be here for long. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Keith Sweat. But uh, anyway, that shit, man. Yeah. Anyway, let me get back on point. Uh, let's say you got Saturn. So you need situations and circumstances that help you build things that um, almost like, you know, restrictions in your life are going to be something that's normal. But you want restrictions in the form of self-discipline, not somebody coming in preventing you from something. So, you know, it comes a, a, and you also need space and opportunity to exert your authority as well or to at least have your authority respected or your boundaries respected so you know respect um comes from like that tenth house energy you know uh status and reputation like you need space to develop your your own reputation you you won't do well with another individual who hurts your reputation or uh forces you into bending your uh also, something for Jupiter chart rulers, morality. You need to make sure you establish a strong morality that isn't able to be bent by others. But at the same time, you want to remain open to learning new perspectives. But you need to develop your morality and make sure that that's something that you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's something that motivates you. But anyway, going back into uh, Saturn, like you don't need to be with somebody who forces you um, who. I'm not going to say who, who challenges your authority because the thing about it is we all need to have authority over ourselves. So it's like you deal with a lot of authority issues. So you might deal with other figures of authority imposing their authority on you and that can make you highly frustrated. But it could also motivate you to be your own authority. And that's really what it is. As a Saturn chart ruler, you need to be your own authority. Don't let anybody come around you telling you how to structure your life. You need to make sure that you... You going forward and you trying to make sense out of your life the best way you can. Not to say you can't take advice, but again, it's like you need to understand where that advice is coming from. Same thing with Jupiter, similar to Jupiter in the sense of like you're as a Jupiter chart ruler, you the one with the good advice. Everybody coming to you, I mean, like I said, doesn't mean that you can't take good at, that you can't take advice. Uh, or that you won't be around other individuals who take advice, but nine times out of ten, you're going to be put in situations that teach you that, oh, I'm the one with the advice. I'm the one that need to be making sure I got the morality. And then with, with Saturn, you, you're going to have situations and circumstances that, that show you, I'm the one who need to start to establish this, this authority. I'm the one who need to get a grip on what's real in my life, and I'm the one who need to structure this shit the way I want to structure it, not listening to everybody who got an opinion on something that they ain't built, you know what I'm saying, type shit, you know, type, you know. But, again, not ego, not egotistical, but understanding that's, that's your ruler. So this is the planet in which as an influence is pushing you towards developing um, awareness on and perspective no matter how, where you're looking from, it's the it's the it's the the thing that should be first on your mind type shit, you know. And see, also I I know that there, say say you got a Capricorn rising, so there might be certain planets like you might have outer planets in your um in your rising sign. Now again, like if if, if that's the case, like I said, it's more like an influence. It's more like an influence and stuff like that. You can kind of be like, oh, that's my chart ruler, because let's let's talk about it, right? Uranus as a chart ruler, technically. Right. And and like, again, this, this stuff be stuff that it's just people will attach themselves to certain things and they don't understand the reality of it. the reality of of the situation that, that these outer planets are really far and the influence they have aren't as strong as um, the first uh, what, seven planets, you know. So when you talk about these influences, you know, again, it, they're not as strong as you might think, you know what I'm saying? They just, they give a little boost in the sense of, and you know, if they give a little, a little sauce, a little, a little razzle dazzle to it, you know what I'm saying? But again, if you like, say you part of the uh, Uranus and Cap generation, uh, Neptune and Cap, it's like if, if you're a Cap rising, you really, your chart ruler really like Saturn. But you got that Uranus influence, so through your authority, you have the ability, you have the influence of change. You know, through your uh, um, your structures and your, the way you make sense out of the world, 
you have the ability to also make that something that's a dream. So you can make dreams like you know what I'm saying. We, we it's like you you have the ability to structure something that hasn't been seen before, something that came from imagination. You have an imaginative or creative way of going about structure and reality and things of that nature. So that's really how the outer planets play out. Um, I wanted to make that clear. Uh, did, is that all the planets? Oh. I did Mercury, I did Venus, I did Mars, I did, yeah, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, what, the sun and the moon left, yeah, sun and the moon aren't really chart rulers, because these are your awareness and your reactions, you know what I'm saying, so these are more things that, that's not associated with, uh, being a chart ruler, you know, well, you know the sun is a, I mean technically I mean technically you can you can you you can look at them as chart rulers technically like if the sun could like because even if you are a Leo rising the sun is still because I look at it like, at first I was thinking of it like in terms of like the sun and the moon being like already there but at the same time they can't be chart rulers technically because the sun as a chart ruler is just you kind of doubling down on expressing yourself you know you doubling down on being seen or bringing something to the forefront, you know, you being the expression, the face of something, you, you know, yeah, you being the face of something, like a Leo rising, if you were the face of something, for the most part, you know, uh, the sun as a chart ruler, it's like, you're here to express yourself to the fullest, um, the moon as a chart ruler, you're here to connect to the world, you know what I'm saying, and again, there's pitfalls in this, you know, you can get too egotistical, or you can get too attached to certain things on the moon end, you know, you can get too attached to certain things and, 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 and be walked all over and be too sensitive and too, you know, the world can be too much for you at times. So, you know, again, these are, but these are realities. And when you have these things as chart rulers, the best thing to do, like I said, is to put yourself in situations, experiences, relationships that cater to these, or you need to go into these things knowing your energy so that you can, because here's the thing, when I say cater to these things, I don't mean you jumping into something randomly and then you expecting other people to just go and go with what your energy needs. No, that's not how the world works. That's not reality. And that's 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 egotistical. There's so many different things wrong with that. You know, we oftentimes get ourselves into that kind of vibe because, again, we're we're conditioned to just believe that we're entitled to that. That's the thing. Entitlement. You're not entitled to somebody's um, catering to your energies. You have to be the representation of your energy, and it's almost like you demand or you're assertive enough to you, you, you that, that you being who you are is a representation again of everybody, everything that somebody needs to know about how to treat you and how you carry yourself reinforces that. Now, when you get across individuals who don't care about that and, or who act, who blatantly can't get with that. These are individuals you just know off the bat that you don't need to be associated with in the first place. But that's why I say it's good to know these things before you even get involved in certain stuff. You need to, again, be an intentional with your involvement. And that goes back to the analogy of the paintbrush and shit like that. You need to be intentional about what you participated in in the first place. Because that is a lot of times where we fuck up. We put ourselves in situations that we knew damn well wasn't going to satisfy the things that we need you know but again a lot of these things happen by mistake as well due to the fact of us not knowing how our energies in the first place that's why astrology is a great tool because you get a grip on oh this is what i'm supposed to be learning and this is actually what i want to experience in this lifetime now your spirit is going to decide on how to do that and that's a conversation you need to have with yourself that's like establishing your relationship with god but um yeah that's chart rulers. chart rulers, though, for the most part. And and again, like with a chart ruler, you just need to understand these these are energies that you need to make sure you are allowing space for in your life, so that you can kind of get a grip on things. And, and as you develop these energies, um, it's it's just a way for you to better align with your experience overall as a whole. So um, I think that's it for the most part. And like I said, you find it through your first house. And then you can also consider signs that your or planets that your sun is conjuncting, more so your sun, and maybe the moon, the moon a little bit, you know, the moon a little bit because it's important, you know, it's what we're comfortable with. So again, it, it rules us, but in a different way, you know. And how you again, 
you might be inclined to think everything's your chart ruler. But no, pick about three planets. Three, yeah, three, about three planets for the most part. About three-ish planets. Not including... Um, not including the... Uh, outer planets or you can look at those as more so just influences things in the background but the real chart rulers is going to be your rising sign um the the planets that are associated with your rising sign and then um certain planets you know planets in your first house and then also and again if you have a stellium in your first house then at that point you need to be a little more discerning you need to understand okay what are the key planets that you keep experiencing because we all have certain um, things that keep popping up in our lives like you keep being put in a situation where you got to learn this or learn that or um, where people look at you to teach you you keep being put in places where you have to assert assert, assert your uh, aggression and your passion you're put in certain experiences where you have to be more compromising you know and a thing too with Venus as a chart ruler make sure you put yourself in situations that don't allow for too much overindulging um, yeah but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so so have a little discernment, understand what are the energies or planetary uh, vibe, vibrations that you find yourself in the most, you know, and that's a good ind indicator of chart rulers, and then you can find where that planet is in your house, in, in your chart. Um, the next video on this type of subject, I'll probably go into how to use these things. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but anyway, much love, hope this was helpful, catch you on the next one.